welcome to Footnotes and Fables from Los Angeles, where we dwell in a place where history meets speculation and myths are made. Today, the story of the Watts Towers. Rising 100 feet over a small plot in South Los Angeles are the Watts Towers. I know I want to do something. I, I, I say I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. Built from 1921 to 1954 by a man who in some places is referred to as Simon Rodilla and in others, Sabato Rodilla. Though his friends, of which there were two, called him Sam. Sam's first friend was Carmen, his wife. Immigrants too poor for a normal plot of land, they settled for a cramped triangular plot on the wrong side of the ten in Watts. But Carmen soon left Sam for a man who could give her the things Sam could not. Those things, of course, were things. Material possessions. Sam was now alone, out of place in a city filled with square jaws and even squarer plots of land. He considered becoming an alcoholic, and although that held some appeal, he decided L.A. had enough drunks. And so he built instead. Some of the people that they think and I was crazy, and, uh, and some people that they said he's going to do something. Made from old steel, stolen tiles, and a disregard for personal safety, Sam's creation soon rose above the city. But Sam's no-tower-having neighbors became jealous. During World War II, they spread rumors that the structure was sending signals to the Japanese. Might have been a secret radio tower. I don't know what it is right now. It was believed that the Tokyo Rose was born here. An official investigation found the towers were suitable for radio transmission. But as no secret messages were discovered, the government let them stand for now. I've the towers. I've the towers for you. After the war, Sam's Towers grew, as did their fame, but the Hollywood elites across the ten were not happy to share the spotlight. The city council agreed with the elites. It was best to get back to pretending South LA did not exist, and so they decreed the towers unsafe. Made from scrap metal, they would return to that form. But the city forgot about one thing, and that thing was the engineer, Bud Goldstone. Not much is known about Bud, but the photos we do have suggest he left a trail of broken hearts and solved math problems in his wake. Calculus by day, calculus by night. Bud aimed to prove the towers safe, so he designed a lateral force test, which is engineer speak for a giant crane yanking on the towers. The epic battle of crane versus garbage tower was set. The smart money was on the crane, but the underdog pulled through. The towers never budged, and with the crane winches overheating, Bud declared the towers victorious. The world now saw Sam for what Bud knew he was, a fellow engineer. And Sam saw Bud for what he was, Sam's second friend. That brings us back to Sam's first friend. In 1954, Carmen was driving nearby, scanning the radio dial, when a familiar voice crackled through. Drawn, Carmen piloted her blue Pontiac back to Sam and found what her old house had become. Sam appeared in an archway, framed by his life's work. Older, but still Sam. She ran to him. They buried her car in a nearby empty lot, so no one would know she was here. Then they disappeared to spend the rest of their life together. Now everything I have told you is true, except for that last part about Carmen. The official story was that Sam just left one day to go live with his sister. In the official version, why Sam stopped building the towers is a mystery, and why he built them in the first place is an even greater mystery. The story about Carmen was dismissed as idle gossip, but there is this fact. While building the Watts Art Center in 2013, workers uncovered a buried car, a faded blue Pontiac. So in the end, I submit, there is no mystery about why Sam built the Watts Towers. Like many works of art, they were created for one reason. Because somewhere, at some time, someone fell in love. <laughs>